Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dusty Sheet channel, thank you very much for tuning in for my review of this here quadcopter from iFlight. It is the SL5 Sidera Advanced. Okay, that's a long name <laughs> for a uh, measly 5 inch uh, quadcopter. Okay, the SL5 Advanced, that's what we'll call it in this video from iFlight. And for an RTF from iFlight it's not super duper cheap. And I won't tell you that it's expensive, there are far more expensive quadcopters, however there are also less expensive quadcopters uh, to be had. So for the approximately 250 euros you pay for this quadcopter you do not get an action camera so it doesn't have a 4K uh, like Target from Cadex or a Runcam hybrid, you'll have to add that yourself. Uh, personally I used a Runcam 5 in this self printed TPU mount. They do offer, as you probably know, a very nice CPU print for a GoPro 7, which I don't have, but this, this mount definitely looks gorgeous. And it goes together with this quad very well, as you can tell. So what you see here is actually almost what you'd buy if you uh, would buy the RTF version. I actually built this one, what you see here, myself. And there are two reasons for that. The first one is that at the time I ordered the parts, the RTF version wasn't available yet and I wanted one because it looks <laughs> gorgeous. Yeah, uh, okay, so and the second one uh, is uh, I like to build quadcopters, so um, yeah, for me it wasn't a problem at all. It does take uh, obviously a lot more time to build a quadcopter, and yeah, if you are looking for an RTF, maybe you don't want to build one, maybe you don't have the time to build a quadcopter, then this is an option, right? So yeah, in this video I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you if it's worth its price. That's basically what it comes down to, right? That's what you want to know. Is this iFlight SL5 Advanced or Sidora Advanced worth its approximately 250 euros? So I think it would be nice to uh, first show you some flying. So we'll start uh, the, the video with my maiden flight actually. This is my uh, line of sight maiden flight. So here we go. All right guys, maiden flight line of sight of the iFlight Sidera SL5 Advance. Is that the entire name? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a bit of a long name. But uh, let's see if it flies. Here we go. Arm. And it arms. It arms. Success, of course. And I hope you'll be able to hear what I'm saying because it is very, very windy. So far, so good. As always, these Zing motors sound buttery smooth. Does it need tuning? I don't know. Always hard to uh, to hear. Okay, let's try a punch out. Why don't we? Here we go. Let's bring it in a little closer. Here we go. Very, very nice. Yeah, I did hear a little bit of oscillation, so it probably needs some tuning. Then again, I don't have an action camera on it yet, so let's reserve the tuning for uh, when I uh, fly it as I'm gonna be flying it, right? And that's with an action camera on it. What I'm uh, also looking at is if I actually see those LEDs, if they aid me in orientation. And to be perfectly honest, not that much. No, no, not really. They're on the top of the, of the arms, right? So I really have to bank it very, very steeply towards me to be able to see those LEDs. So I'm gonna go ahead and even 
with this dark backdrop, as you can see, trees and the sky is pretty dark over there. I know. You really need a, a, a bright headlight to be able to see the LEDs. I only see them when I'm flying very, very low, like so. No, okay. So there, they are definitely a nice gimmick and probably if you're flying FPV together with other people, they'll be able to see the LEDs, but like this. The quad flies very, very well though. I haven't uh, really gone much above 40% <laughs> throttle to be honest. Yeah, as always the Sing motors sound super duper smooth. Because of the wind I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear the quadcopter well. Oops, damn it. Okay, that was uh, pilot error, sorry about that. Are we still good to go? Should be. Yep, all right. Yeah, I flew it straight into the ground, man. <laughs> that's, that's what happens if you try to narrate and fly at the same time. Let's try another punch out. Yeah, rocket ship. That's what it is. I am very much looking forward to FPV flying it. Again, I do hear a little bit of an uh, oscillation in uh, punch outs. But we'll, but we'll see what that looks like. And uh, again, basic tune. Oh, and yeah, this is beta flight 4.05. Uh, so there is a very good chance I need to lower me some P's and D's. The, uh, right now it's simply a, uh, an educated guess, the tune. And it flies and it doesn't um, have uh, unintentional takeoffs and such, flyaways. So it's not horrible, but yeah. From the punch, the, from the way the, the punch out sound, I do need to do me some uh, tuning. And it's starting to rain. Okay. Um, yeah, successful uh, test flight, I guess, with a crash. <laughs> and again, um, probably some tuning needed, but we'll see. And um, I was expecting it to start raining with those dark clouds. But it flies. Next up, FPV flying this Sidera SL5 Advanced from iFlight. Here we go. Okay, so that was a first uh, mild <laughs> crash test, I guess, uh, but it flew. And by now I actually have a newer beta flight version on this quadcopter. It's 4.1.1, current uh, latest version. And I've got both filter sliders set to 1.3. And that's the only thing I've changed so far. So stock, beta flight 4.1.1. And I've got again both filter sliders at 1.3. Uh, with those settings the quad flies very very well, but it probably needs to have the D gain altered a little. Uh, I, I, I probably need a higher D or a higher D min. Uh, it all depends on the weight of your camera and the weight of your lipo. And speaking of, the LiPo I used for this quadcopter was a GNB 1106S. I'll have a link to that LiPo in the description of this video. And I use that LiPo on most every of my 5 inch 6S quadcopters. They perform admirably, perfectly basically. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sponsored by GMB, I've bought the LiPos myself. But um, yeah, you won't be disappointed, uh, at least if you run a reasonably normal 6S setup, those LiPos will work out for you. Okay, and the next thing, well actually let me show you a, an FPV flight with this quadcopter, why not? So what you see here is a capture from my Runcam 5. And again, you will see some propulse oscillations, not a whole lot, but a little. 
therefore again the D will probably have to be increased or only the D min yeah probably only the D min I'm not sure how much I'd say 5% or something like that yeah that would probably work out well I can however fly around the propos oscillations you will see in this video I was testing the quadcopter right so um, yeah but this was with beta flight 4.1.1 and looks perfectly fine and actually let me shut up for a few seconds and let you listen to the quadcopter that's always uh, important well if you know what to listen to but I think you'll agree that the quadcopter sounds smooth clean okay let me shut up for a, a few minutes Okay, I think you'd agree with me when I tell you that the quadcopter never sounds stressed out. It sounds like it's, uh, well, it's got a lot of power reserve and it does. Uh, this is a, uh, especially on 6S, I should add, I uh, always fly 6S these days. There is a 4S version, <coughs> sorry, but uh, I'd go for the 6S version because, well, there's no reason not to, other than maybe you have a lot of 4S light post in that case yeah the 4s version will probably fly very well too the 6s version will have uh, more power reserve probably uh, longer flight time uh, the escs will have a an easier time so yeah again i would definitely go for the 6s version and then comes the question is this quadcopter worth its price i actually paid a little bit more because the parts separately cost more than the rtf version i'm not sure how much more but i paid more than the 250 euros you'd pay so did i get my money's worth yeah um you get in this rtf the nice zing motor so not the light version nice titanium shafts big bearings and they look 
awesome. All the, the real Zing motors, not only the ones with the camo print, but yeah, the, lo looks awesome. Especially with these TPU parts, the, the gold camo on the, these motors looks very nice. And as you could hear, they run great. Now, this Sidera Advanced has 2306 motors, which is for me something I wouldn't personally pick. Most, well all of my freestyle quadcopters have 2207 or 2208 motors. So 2207 or this 2306, you'd probably think, yeah that's almost, that's more or less the same volume of motor, right? And yeah, I think they perform approximately, well, the top speed is probably more or less the same and the top torque. However, your power curve is different. The, the motor responds differently to, to your throttle inputs than a 2207. Now, it's not really better or worse, it's more uh, your preference or what you're used to. And again, I'm used to 2207 motors, which have a very flat power curve. I think the responsiveness of these motors are more above 50% throttle, whereas the 2207s it's more spread out. Again, if you'd have the, uh, this quadcopter and it would be the only quadcopter or maybe you only have 2306 motors on your quadcopters, then you'd be used to it and it wouldn't matter to you. It does matter to me. Nevertheless, this is a joy to fly. These motors run great, they never run warm, they are uh, responsive and, uh, and they look nice. Yeah, <laughs> not unimportantly. Okay, so I've already done a review of this frame. You might be interested in that. I'll have a link up there to my review of this SL5 frame. It's a nice frame and it, uh, yeah, um, there's no strange resonances in this frame. So it's apparently stiff enough. And the uh, TPU print in which the camera is mounted, the FEV camera is mounted, that works. There's no vibrations or jello in the FEV feed at all. The RTF comes with the Canix Rattel FEV camera, which is a very nice camera. I can't uh, tell you anything uh, different. I don't have a lot of Rattels. Actually, this is the only... No, I have one other Rattel. Uh, they both work uh, perfectly. I've heard from other people that there sometimes blacks out or has trouble with direct sunlight. I have not uh, had that problem myself. But yeah, I live in the Netherlands, I don't live in the Caribbean, so maybe in other light circumstances you could. I don't know. Uh, again, I have never had problems with these Rattel cameras. They, uh, yeah, very good FV experience uh, in my mind. Okay, this stack. So this quadcopter costs a little more than, say, for instance, the Nazgul from iFlight, right? The Nazgul is a value proposition. It costs less than 200 uh, euros, approximately 180. Great quadcopter for its money. However, you get, don't get as nice a stack as in this SL5 Advanced. This is a dual gyro F7 flight controller. Um, that makes it a little more convenient if you want to add, say, a GPS. And does it fly any better? Hard to say. It flies great. And personally, in all my self-built quadcopters, I use F7 flight controllers. Yeah. Maybe just because I can. Um, would I notice the difference between this F7 and the F4 version? Ooh, ooh, hard to say. Um, hmm. <laughs> ooh. Um, yeah, again, it's mostly for me the convenience if I want to add other peripherals. And this F7 has f four connectors for the LED boards. I've only installed two, as you can probably see. Yeah, it's uh, very easy to install LED boards on this uh, F7 flight controller. So, yeah. But other than that, hard to say. Okay, also this advanced version comes with these nice motors, the F7 stack. But also a 1 watt 
Is that correct? Yeah, a 1 watt VTX. So you could call that a long range VTX. I pro personally say that it uh, penetrates better through buildings and uh, f uh, trees. That's how I see that uh, upgrade. I personally never fly long range, but it, it would be an upgrade uh, in my mind to have this uh, one, one watt VTX. You can definitely see that if you fly behind buildings or trees that your FV feed is, uh, is better with this one watt uh, VTX. So yeah, that's definitely nice to have. Okay, the last thing I should mention is these LEDs. I've uh, mentioned them before. Uh, that's one of the upgrades uh, post to the Nashville quadcopters from iFly. That's what you pay the extra dough for. LEDs on the all four arms and as you can tell I've only installed two uh, myself. It's a bit of a gimmick. Again you won't see them uh, in flight, especially not uh, if you're flying FEV and as you could hear me say while flying it line of sight, you don't see them line of sight flying either. So, but it, it does look nice if you are uh, if you use them for instance as uh, arming indicators uh, they can help you out but other than that it's mostly a gimmick. So in conclusion if you compare this quadcopter to iFlight's own Nazgul quadcopters what is that the XL5 Nazgul its value proposition this quadcopter is close to 50, 60, 70 depends on uh, the time uh, you are watching this video, but this quadcopter is definitely quite a bit more expensive. For that money you get nicer motors. These will fare better in crashes, these motors. Probably they'll last longer, or most the bearing will last longer. You get the LEDs, which is again a nice gimmick. You get the F7 stack, which yeah, it's debatable if that's really uh, a benefit to you, uh, but uh, yeah, okay. You get a better VTX, definitely a better VTX, and you get a nicer FEV camera. So is that all worth paying 50, 60 euros more for? Uh, to me it was. It, oh, by the way, one other thing, it also looks great, but that's personal taste of course. Um, yeah, to me it is worth its uh, extra price tag. The XL5 Nazgul also flew very very nicely. This is more of a quadcopter. That's simply what it comes down to. So um, yeah, I don't think it's overpriced, but there are other quadcopters at a lower price point uh, available. So um, you actually tell me if you'd say that the extras you get in this quadcopter are worth the extra money. Uh, there is ob obviously a link in the description of this video to this quadcopter, also to the 4S version if you'd uh, prefer that one. And you tell me, would you pay that money for an, uh, an iFlight quadcopter? Again, there are far more expensive quadcopters available and there are, even from iFlight themselves, quadcopters uh, below 200 euros available. Yeah, I'd actually be interested to see what you think of that of that price tag for this quadcopter. Now, if this would be a hype sales channel, I'd uh, be telling you that this is the best thing since sliced bread, the best quadcopter uh, of 2020. <laughs> Get one now. This is, however, not such a channel. So I'll simply tell you that I was happy with my purchase. This quadcopter flies. Uh, well, what I'd expect it to fly like, uh, it's, it's a powerful quadcopter, as most modern quadcopters are, especially on 6S, it uh, is uh, a joy to fly. And uh, I've had minor crashes with this quadcopter, not major crashes. And all crashes I've had on this, with this quadcopter were uh, on grass fields and mostly on artificial grass. So yeah, that's the easiest or the, the best way of, for a quadcopter to crash, right? It doesn't even get dirty in crashes like that. And I've had a little bit of damage on my XT60. On one of the crashes uh, the XT60 was, well, got a prop strike. Yeah, 
so uh, maybe I should add me uh, a zip tie or something. That's by the way one slight difference from the RTF build. In the RTF the XC60 or the power lead will come out at the rear over here. And I personally want my uh, power leads to be as short as possible and preferably on, uh, come out at the side. Oh by the way, now that I'm watching this side of the quadcopter, there's also a Wi-Fi antenna over here. So that's a benefit, I hadn't even thought of that, but that's uh, a benefit of this uh, advanced version. You can change settings on this flight controller with your phone in the field and that's definitely convenient. Yeah, with the SpeedyB app. So, hmm, yeah. That's an added bonus of this uh, this uh, slightly or slightly this more pricey quadcopter from iFlight. Okay, again, I'd be interested to see what you think of this quadcopter and of its price. If you are left with questions, hit me up a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.